Nokia just released a phone that's supposedly built to last, made from recycled materials, and is equipped with what Nokia is calling quick fix repairability. Is this just a bunch of marketing nonsense, or does this phone really have something new to offer? One thing's for sure, it's the first phone I've seen with an iFixit logo on the box. Nokia says starting with this phone, they're going to be making smartphones that you can fix yourself, using iFixit as the distributor for parts and repair manuals. So let's take a look at this one. Is it really as easy to repair as the product page makes it out to be? For the 350 Australian dollars, or around 230 US, this is the cheapest phone currently on the market with the ability to purchase genuine replacement parts. Along with the phone is a SIM eject tool, some basic paperwork, and a USB cable. No power brick, but while I'd usually complain about that, Nokia actually included a USB-A to USB-C cable, so you can actually use your old charging brick. And with three years of warranty and security updates, this cheap Android boasts some pretty impressive claims. So it's time we get this phone all fired up. The two Android version updates promised is better than it sounds, as it's not currently running the latest version. Being loaded with Android 12, this means you're really only getting till Android 14, which is currently in beta. Still, Android version updates are not as important as security updates, which Nokia promises monthly for three years. With a headphone jack and room for either dual nano SIMs or an SD card, it's better equipped than almost every flagship. But what about that quick fix repairability? I was expecting the return of a removable back panel with easy battery access, but it's not that simple. While no heat is required, the back is held in with many plastic clips. The official manual instructs you to insert the plastic pick above the SIM tray and work around the perimeter. While not too complicated, it is a little bit more challenging than I would have expected from a phone that boasts such easy repairability. You need to take care with this, as the plastic clips allow for a sudden jarring separation of the back panel, which could break the fingerprint cable. It needs to be disconnected before the back can be fully detached. A phone that uses plastic clips to attach the back is not new. In fact, many low-end phones have used this very method before, including the Xiaomi A1, a phone I took apart several years ago. In fact, the internals very closely resemble that phone. So what makes the G22 any different? Why would you pick this over any other budget Android? Its big selling point is the genuine replacement parts, meaning no more hoping some AliExpress part will work as advertised, taking the guesswork out of buying parts. But is there anything else Nokia has done to improve the repairability of this phone? I'm going to dig a little further to see. Located under the NFC antenna is the motherboard. There isn't many things connecting to it, as with most phones at this price point, a lot of smaller things such as the proximity sensor and LED flash are soldered directly onto the board. Down at the bottom of the phone is the speaker and charge port, both secured with Phillips screws. But before I take out the charge port, I wanted to see how easy it was to remove the battery. This is the one part of the phone that will degrade no matter how you treat your phone. Most phones use a ridiculous amount of adhesive. Nokia has provided a pull tab to help us with its removal, but has failed in the same way as practically every other phone maker. The adhesive is just too strong. As such, I wasn't able to use the pull tab to remove it, having to resort to a suction cup. While I was able to use another method to remove it, someone doing a repair like this for the first time might not know what to do especially when the repair manual shows the battery lifting out with such ease. While not a hard battery to remove in the context of modern phones, it wasn't as easy as the manual implied. Back at the bottom of the phone, we can detach the charge port and headphone jack daughter board. Underneath is a very unimpressive vibration motor. Given just how poor this vibration motor is, I thought maybe I could retrofit a Samsung one in, however, it's a completely different size. So it looks like we're stuck with it. Running this flex cable between the frame and back of the screen is an odd choice, especially in a phone meant for quick and easy repair. However, one positive with the available replacement parts is that a new display comes attached with the frame, easing repairs and limiting the amount of things we need to remove. 
The last thing inside this Nokia G22 is its motherboard, packing 128 gigs of storage and 4 gigs of RAM. With the G22 totally disassembled, it's time to evaluate whether this is actually a more repairable smartphone. It opens like several budget phones, and its internals are arranged in a similar way. It has a battery pull tab, but it still uses too much adhesive. But you can buy genuine replacement parts from day one, so you know what repairs will cost you. And Nokia isn't trying to stop you from repairing the phone. In fact, they're encouraging you to give it a go, with self-repair not voiding your warranty. One thing to keep in mind is if you repair one of these, there is two screw sizes. Thankfully though, they're color coded. While the Nokia G22 isn't the most repairable smartphone on the market, it's a good start and commitment from Nokia to be considering repair for our devices. I really hope they continue on this trend and make improvements with each new model. But as for this phone, it's time we get it back in one piece. Given the very few parts inside this phone, it's not going to take long. One small thing that gets me is the liquid indicators being placed on top of the screws. If repair doesn't void your warranty, there's no need for them to be placed here, as they just get ruined when you unfasten the screw they're stuck to. Once the NFC antenna has been fastened into place, it's time to reattach the back panel. I'll reconnect the flex cable for the fingerprint reader and attach the bracket that goes on top. After wiping down the internals to remove any dust, the last thing we need to do is press the back panel back into place. Once all the clips are firmly in place, I can reinstall the SIM card tray, and we're done. So this is it, the Nokia G22. Nokia's first attempt at a sustainable and repairable smartphone. While it has no standout repair feature, it's good to see another phone maker offer genuine parts and longer warranty periods. And when software support does end, it's good to know the bootloader is unlockable. It's by no means a powerful phone, but for those who want something more affordable than a Fairphone or Google Pixel, this might be worth considering. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.